What are those? These are string beans, a pole bean that I like that I grew from seed. And today I wanted to show you guys how you can grow stuff from seed as well. All right? Not bad, huh? I grow a lot of stuff from seed in the spring and I thought, let me show you guys how I do it. We have a couple of seed starting and poop house and greenhouse videos and I wanted to update all that with a video today on Garden Fork. It's not even spring. No, but it smells like spring and it looks like spring, so ready to go. Spring in your heart. <laughs> to start off with, we want some sort of a seed starting tray. Uh, you can also use uh, newspaper. We make these really cool newspaper pots two different ways. There's links to the videos below. This I like because it has a self-watering feature to it. There's a couple of brands, but it usually has some sort of a wicking material with a water tray. And then the plant area and then a clear cover top like this. Heart is optional. <laughs> um, it's a long story, but a love story. So. And something, they're reusable, right? Yeah, so something like this. As long as you treat them nicely, they are reusable. If you manhandle them, uh, they will break because it's kind of thin plastic. All right, that's step one. The other thing you need is soil. What is really important here is that you don't use potting soil or soil or dirt from your yard or garden, but you use seed starting soil. And it will say, I mean, this says potting mix, yeah, but it says seed starting, and that is key. It's a lighter mix. A lot of times if you just use dirt from your yard or some potting soil, it crusts over and cakes on the top of the pot and the seeds have a harder time getting through. Take your seed starting mix, put it in a bowl, and you wanna moisten it. And you want it moist to the point where it'll hold in your hand together like that. So I just drop it into the middle of the seed starting tray. And then I just kinda of cut my hands and push it into the far corners. You wanna press down the soil. You don't want it loose, you want it kinda of compact in each little square. But not really squished, right? It still needs to get air in there, right? Right, it, you don't want it super tight, but you don't want it super loose. You wanna just... Just right. The simplest tool you can use to plant seeds, I think, is a pencil and a packet of seeds. One packet, you'd surprised how far that'll go. It'll fill multiple trays, all right? Here we go. A lot of seeds barely need to be covered. Like these are lettuce seeds, so they just need to be a little bit under the soil. So I just open up the soil a little bit and I tap in a, like two or three seeds, that's it, for each little one. And then I just tap them down or I'll just take my finger and tap it lightly like that. Just cover them up and leave them like that. Larger seeds like snap peas or string beans will get planted deeper. You want the moisture level of your seed starting tray to be slightly moist to slightly dry. Maybe even damp, but not soaking wet. Wet invites fungus and mold and that will hurt your seedlings. The keys to seed success are warmth first and then light. The seeds to germinate usually don't need light, but they do need to be warm. I put them near the furnace in our basement, so if you have a really warm spot in your house, that's where you should put your little seed starting trays. It really makes a difference. Or you can get a seed warming mat, which is like a heating pad that's waterproof. We have a Labrador making noise below us here. <laughs> She's fine, she's just a little tired. Whoa, those grew fast. In a few days or a week or so, you're gonna get plants. And it's really a cool thing when it's freezing cold outside that all of a sudden you have some stuff going on. Once you see that the seeds are starting to sprout, you wanna get them under your grow lights. We have a DIY grow light system that we made a video about. Again, the links for that is in the show notes. But your seed trays need to be right up against the lights. They can touch the fluorescent tubes. It's totally fine, that won't burn the leaves. But when it first starts, you want your grow light right, you know, just, just off the seed tray itself. And then 
as the plant grows, I raise up the light and you'll get string beans or lettuce or something like this. I leave the grow lights on for 16 to 18 hours a day. I use regular old fluorescent light bulbs. It's really simple. Again, the video information about that is below. But you can grow stuff like this. If you put your seedlings in the window, they will get leggy. I don't know, you, maybe you've seen this before when you've tried to grow seeds and the, t the, first, the first leaves are way up here and the plant is way down here. W most windows don't give enough light, I've found. That's just how I feel about it, that's Eric. But with the ways I've used, I get really nice robust plants like this. And so can you by going the Garden Fork way. All right? Are you gonna, are you gonna let the audience ask some questions today? Is there a question? So, because it's actually not spring, it's still winter, which plants do I start early? Because I bet I can't start them all early. Excellent. Oh, good job, audience. Thanks to my Garden Fork uh, co compatriot, Rick, there is a really cool planner called Clyde's Garden Planner. And it tells you, depending on where you live, by using this little sliding thing here, <laughs> when to plant what. And it's brilliant. And it's really easy, and I'll link to it in the show notes here. But thanks to Rick for this thing. There's also some online guides as well, but I love analog, and I love Clyde, so. Give us an example. Uh, that would require me using my brain. So you first set your average last spring frost, which you can find out online. And ours at the end of March. And then if I look at lettuce, SI is February 8th. <gasps> so we're actually behind schedule to get our lettuce into our seed starting tray. Grow, lettuce, grow. All right, we have more of the seed starting stuff. If you want to make paper pots, they're really cool and fun for your kids to make. We have a vi couple of videos about that as well, plus some mini greenhouses, all sorts of gardening stuff on aptly named Garden Fork. We do stuff like this every week, eclectic DIY, I call it. It's me, the Labradors, and the camera operator doing fun stuff. I think next week we're going to be doing greenhouse repair. <clears throat> okay. <laughs> so make it a great day. I'll see you later. Bye.